Welcome to Connecting with Coincidence with psychiatrist Bernard David Beitman, MD. Dr. Beitman is the founder of The Coincidence Project. The project encourages people like you to tell each other coincidence stories. To learn more about Dr. Beitman's work, put Connecting with Coincidence in your web browser. You'll find his book, his Psychology Today blog, and the interviews from this podcast. And now your host, Bernard Beitman, MD. Welcome to Connecting with Coincidence. I am your host, Dr. Bernard Beitman, MD. And as many of you know by now, I'm a psychiatrist. And I've been always stuck on the question of how the mind and the brain interact with each other. Uh, there's, they don't, uh, they don't run it. Anyway, that's the best answer I can give you right now. Nobody really knows. I have some idea about how that might work. And I describe it in my new book uh, coming out in September of this year uh, about how mind and brain might interact with each other as well as with greater mind. But one of the ways that I've been figuring this stuff out is through the use of meaningful coincidences because synchronicity and serendipity provide clues to how our minds and brains connect not only to each other, but to our bodies and other people and nature and our environment and uh, the earth. And the meaningful coincidences occur in all, all aspects of life, but uh, you know it takes somebody to notice them. That means you, and that's what we're doing here is trying to get you to remember to pay attention to them because once you start doing, seeing them, you start seeing a lot of them. You can order my, my new book uh, coming out in September. As I mentioned, there's a button underneath for those YouTube people who are watching us there uh, and the order links are there for the pre-ordering. So my story today goes back into the old days of my life. At the end of fifth grade, our family moved from Shaker Heights, Ohio to Wilmington, Delaware for my mother to be back with her mother and her three sisters and their families. The reason I'm telling you this is because uh, the person I'm interviewing today, uh, Philip Mary, is got the only PhD in synchronicity and leadership in the world now. So this is a leadership story coming out of fifth grade. Somehow I found out that when, uh, when I got into sixth grade, that there would be a student council president election and any sixth grader could run. I'd only been there for two weeks, so I could, I could do it. So the elementary school in Shaker Heights that I had come from had, had well-run established campaign ideas, which I used as part of my election campaign in Wilmington, Delaware. I tapped a classmate, Jimmy Folks, to play his saxophone. He got a few other players to join the band. We paraded her from classroom to classroom uh, window because it was a one-story building. So each classroom had a view on the outside. Uh, while Jimmy and his band played songs like America the Beautiful, I stood in front of, front of that, those windows, beaming and smiling into the darkened classrooms. I also put up a poster folded in half on, on the walls inside the elementary school. On the front of this half folded poster um, was written, open this poster and you will see who is voting for Bernie B. And you opened the poster and there was a mirror. They saw themselves. So the new boy won the election. Leadership and coincidences, seizing the opportunity, serendipity, being in the right place at the right time, applying accumulated information and experience. Our guest today is well aware of all this and much more with his PhD in leadership and synchronicity. He is Philip, Mar Philip Mary and a clear innovator. He's got a book coming out, Philip does. As you are watching this podcast, 
the book should be coming out and ready for you to be able to see. It's called The Nine Keys to Synchronicity. And it's very clearly written about how to practically apply synchronicity ideas in your regular life, not just about leadership. He's, he's done a lot, Philip Mary. Uh, he's 41 years of delivering team and leadership and cross-cultural events in 64 countries. He's been 25 years regional representative for Belbin's team roles and conducts coaching accreditation. Philip has accredited more than 400 team facilitators in 12 countries. Keep in mind, this guy's in Singapore. Singapore. He's a senior UN consultant, CSP and global speaking fellow, British by birth, taxi driver at the beginning of his professional life, a family therapist. I love bringing those two things up for him. Uh, I mean, to be a London taxi driver, you've got to really have a great uh, sp spatial awareness because those were all cattle trails that some of those, those roads that you got to run around in and as a taxi driver. And he's worked globally from Singapore for the last 31 years. Welcome, Philip Mary, to the show. Great to be here, uh, Bernie. Um, Nice to be on your show, and I, I've seen so many of your show, and you interviewed me, I think, three years ago, so I, I'm very honored to be asked back uh, and, and to chat with you about interesting stuff today. Well, the interesting stuff we're going to be talking about is your book, uh, because I think you've done such a very nice job with your nine keys uh, of synchronicity, and I, I think it's, uh, it's such uh, it's such an important idea you're doing to bring synchronicity practically, because you're a practical guy as I am, uh, to try to, I mean, again, as a taxi driver, you got to get from here to there. And as a football player, I had to get from there to there too. Uh, you, we got to, you got to keep your feet on the ground. A lot of people get spaced out by uh, synchronicity thinking. And we, we need to be practical as well as be uh, ethereal. We want to keep feet on the ground and, and mind in the cosmos. And you've done that, you're doing that. So how did you get started with the, your nine keys? How, how did you get going with that? Well, the first thing to say, Bernie, is at the time that I did my PhD on leadership and synchronicity, I was the only person in the world who did a ground theory based PhD on leadership and synchronicity. I don't know whether I still am. So I, d I don't want to take accolades that, that don't necessarily belong to me now. But uh, when I did my PhD, that was certainly true. I did my PhD simply because stuff happened to me that I couldn't explain logically. All through my life, I noticed I wanted things and suddenly they turned up. I didn't plan anything, I didn't do anything, and suddenly they were there. Uh, and so as I realized that, I began to ask all around me, leaders that I was working with, people that I knew, did the same thing happen to them? And they said, yes, it does. So I said, let me go deep here. Let me do a PhD, uh, grounded theory, meaning that you do field work where you actually ask people who experience synchronicity. And I interviewed 23 global executives and from their ideas and answers to the question, what do you think facilitates synchronicity? That's the basis of my PhD. Uh, and then that became the basis uh, of my book. So the nine keys of synchronicity come from the answers these 23 executives gave me about what facilitates synchronicity. And I wanted to take this, Bernie, you're absolutely right. I, I, I want to be practical around this. A lot of people, once you mention synchronicity, they kind of think it's spiritual and woo-woo and don't want to know. Uh, and I wanted to go beyond that to say, look, synchronicities happen, meaning that unusual events fall into place without you doing anything 
that give you answers to questions that you are facing in your life. So I'm always the guy that want to codify that and make it as practical as possible, meaning the nine keys are about keys that you can use to open the door to experience more synchronicities. So that's, that's how it happened. Uh, and I'm literally excited to talk to you to, but today, Bernie. You know I'm always excited to talk to you. But today is the day that my book is finally formatted and finally edited, and it's actually going for printing as, as we speak. So today's a synchronicity by itself, almost. That you and I chose this date a few weeks ago, but it just happens to be the day that the book is finished. Well, I, I, I kind of like the idea that uh, two guys who are tuned into this could run a, a synchronicity dance together. So that's, <laughs> that's kind, of, kind of the way I like to think of things. And the publishing and the date that the book will actually be available is about when, is when? It'll be two or three weeks time. I mean, literally this morning I signed confirming that the editing and formatting was done. So it's now on its way to the printer uh, and my publisher will tell me later this week the exact date the the publication will happen well it will be something like uh, the first or second week of july 2022 probably probably uh, and, and, like and you see the top left of my picture here that's the front cover of the book that's a great cover and uh i don't i don't you know, for some reason, I'm a little on the dull side sometimes. And the idea that the keys open the door, the, the keys open the door, uh, that the doors have lots of meaning for people. Yeah. Uh, the lady yeah. and the tiger is one of my favorite, but it's also like, which, which is going to be behind, what's going to be behind that door? Uh, well, and, the interesting thing, if you look at the actual cover, I like, I, ch I chose the image. And if you look in the door through the keyhole, there's light coming. And I, the subtitle I, I kind of gave was Nine Keys of Synchronicity. Um, basically, they're all around us hiding in plain view. So, so my notion of synchronicity is there are answers that we see every day, but we don't notice properly and don't use them to be aware of them. And that can be simple stuff, answers to simple questions, and it can be the answers to life and bigger questions. So, so my intention here, Bernie, was to say, with the nine keys, and this just came from, from the research that, that I did, uh, there are three keys which are the here and now discovering of synchronicity. There are three keys which help you integrate synchronicity into your life and there are three keys which are mindsets so you're very right when you say i'm practical um some people think i'm not but but i think i am i wanted to begin with how do you first notice synchronicities and what are the keys that will help you use them to your benefit so i don't know how you want me to go through this bernie do you want me to go uh well, key I'm, by I'm, I'm going to, I'll, I'll give you some idea about it, but uh, the, um, the hiding in plain sight uh, one, uh, as uh, the scarlet letter, I, no, I mean, the, the tell the Edgar Allan, no, the, I use the phrase in the beginning of my first synchronicity book, the, the mysterious hiding in plain sight. Uh, I didn't do that. There you go. Uh, and, and so I, was, I was glad to hear that. Uh, I, I think the purloined letter is where uh, the, the letter was hiding in plain sight. And that's the that idea that it's in plain sight. I'm, you're the first person I've heard echo what I had written um, four or five years ago in the, in the epigraph to my first book. So that that's what we're talking about. It's the and I'll say in the mysterious, because there's the light coming here, then we got to make some uh, sense out of it. And then the, the first thing is to notice them, because does a coincidence exist Yeah. if nobody notices it? Well, that, and that's why I think it's very interesting that Carl Jung said something about synchronicity is available for those who have eyes to see. 
and 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 my 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 full subtitle is open the doors to possibilities that are all around you hidden in plain view i didn't know you had that in your first book bernie there's another synchronicity between you and i yeah I, the, the, I, I, it, it, it's it suggests minds operating in similar in parallel ways within what I call the psychosphere, our, our shared mental yeah. atmosphere. Yeah, and I, yeah. I'm very glad uh, we're both uh, pleased to hear that correlation between our thinking and, and our thinking. So the first important thing is you got to notice those coincidences or synchronicities. You got to notice them. So how, tell us how you are suggesting people notice them. So my, my first key is be curious about out of the blue events. So as you go about your daily life, most of us, Bernie, have a routine. Most of us have days that look similar, although that's changing, I guess. So the first thing to me about noticing synchronicity is about what turned up in your life today that was unusual that doesn't normally happen. Because that to me is an indication that maybe a synchronicity is trying to show itself to you. Now, that can be taking a different route to work. It can be taking a different restaurant. It can be going to a conference and sitting and talking to people you don't normally talk to. So the, to me, the, the, the first key, important key, is what's happening that doesn't normally happen. And that tells you, be on alert. There's something coming to you, to your benefit. It's, uh, I'll call it anomaly. Uh, and the, it, it's so fascinating to me that astronomers look for anom anomaly, anomalies to see what else might be going on. Yeah. But human yeah. beings yeah. don't do that. Thank well, we, 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 we do and we don't, Bernie. I think those who are switched on to this do begin to notice, and I'll, I'll talk later about the life of synchronicity. Because once you're switched on by a synchronicity that happens to you, and then you begin to say, how the hell did that happen to me? How is that possible? And then you begin to stay awake. So what one of my key synchronicities, uh, I think I've maybe told you before, but let me tell it again, there I was in my business here in Singapore, around about 1995, I think. And I was saying to myself at 10 minutes before four in the afternoon, I need $15,000 to balance the books. 10 minutes before four. Four o'clock, the phone rang. My business partner from Amsterdam, Dr. von Strumpenar said, Philip, are you free to go to Beijing next week we have a booking for a cross-cultural leadership seminar and I'd like you to go. I said, yeah, I'm actually free. Then he said to me, well, also interesting, Philip, it's good price, it's $15,000. Now, 10 minutes before four, I need $15,000. Four o'clock, the phone rings, $15,000 is there. And that shook me to my core, thinking, how the hell does that happen? And that, as well as many other ones, but that's a, start, a startling one, got me to say, there's something in the world that has my back, whether I know it or not, and I just need to be open to it. So from that synchronicity and many others, I began to look out for these anomalies, as you call them, which are the harbinger of, of a synchronicity coming. Yeah. Yeah, you be. I, I I put it in terms of becoming sensitized to the possibility. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you became. Well, but, but, but what's important though, Bernie, is very often some people just say, "Ah, luck, coincidence, that's life," and then let it go by. So when you ask me how I came to synchronicity, I came to it because these things happen to me so often. I said, I want to go deeper here. I want to really understand what the heck is going on. So that's key number one. Notice something that's curious and different. And then key number two is immediately link it to the big picture of your life. Connect the dots. Now, with my $15,000, that was fairly easy because I needed the money 
and here's the money turning up and that was fine key number three is to act on intuition not just be aware of intuition but to act on it so obviously for this situation i told you with the fifteen thousand dollars i said okay i'll go to beijing that was clearly something that i should be doing and from a business perspective that led to a long and fruitful relationship with the client in beijing so i was just starting my business i needed money coming in i need clients coming in almost like synchronicity says here's the client it's the money you want for your business this month and it turned out to be an ongoing important client for many years in my life well, well that's so the those, that's the coolest part of it for me that i didn't know about is that yeah. it wasn't just fifteen thousand. it was a door that opened to yeah. help, help your business get going i mean oh yeah for sure yeah. for sure oh yeah i mean i was running my business at the time it was in the first year or two and you know when you first start your business Obviously, you got to get clients and you got to get moving. You got to get work coming in. Yeah, that led to a lot of business from this one particular client. So those are my first three keys of the nine, which are the discover part of synchronicity. Look out for out of the blue events. Take notice of them and follow them. When they happen, connect the dots. What's this saying in my life? And then once it's clear what they're saying act on the intuition a lot of people feel they should do something but don't take action so those are my first three keys how do you define intuition phil intuition very simple intuition is the sensing beyond logic that you must do something it's a little voice inside you that says do this a lot of people confuse intuition with quick thinking. So it might be you come up with a quick answer to something, and that's simply because you faced that situation many, many times before, and your, voice, your brain is just working quick. The second one, uh, and I talk about this in the book, and these come from the HeartMath organization. A lot of my development over the last years have been with the HeartMath Institute uh, in Boulder, Boulder uh, California. They say that intuition often is the sensing of the energies of the earth so once you go to a particular place you can sense the energies in that location that's the second thing that people call intuition which is not the third definition which again heart math talk about this is when you know what to do beyond any logic in a particular situation and they actually have identified that it's the heart and they've measured this they've strapped stuff to people's hearts and brains and done experiments and the heart knows six seconds before something is about to happen so intuition is, is that knowing that you have about a particular decision that you need to make well i'm fascinated by the earth informed intuition yeah well, again, we probably don't have a lot of time to get into it, but anybody interested, go to the HeartMath Institute site. And they do a lot of work on sensing the vibrations of the earth. And they show that we human beings can sense those vibrations as, as they happen. And then, uh, and, they talk about and then interpreting those vibrations into something that can become an action is a trick yes. that's a trick yeah. well exactly i mean one of one of the most interesting things i found in in, in my research on this uh, bernie was that before chernobyl happened you know the um the nuclear reactor in in ukraine before chernobyl happened a week before it happened people were sensing and having dreams about a disaster about to appear and so to me the, the it's, it's a whole unexplored area by me anyway but lots of people have explored it is the ability to sense what it is that the environment or the place is saying to us because if you believe in quantum entanglement believe that's the wrong word to say quantum mechanics is the way the world is organized we know that now and quantum entanglement is your ability to sense 
other people and the environment. Uh, and I think that's that's a whole area that, you know, will we'll, we'll get stronger and stronger in the next few years. Oh, yeah. I, I don't use the term quantum mecha- entanglement. I use psychosphere because yeah, it's a little, a little easier for me to think about that way. Uh, just because it's an atmosphere, it's an energy field, it's full of information and energy, and that we are immersed in it. And it's not unlike the field, the quantum field you're describing yeah, it's, also. Yeah. Uh, it's just easier for me to conceptualize yeah. as, a, well, as, I, a, as a thing. I, li- I like to use quantum mechanics. I, I don't understand it. Uh, our friend, um, what's our friend in California? You, Sky. Sky, Sky, Sky will explain. Yeah. Sky will explain this better than me. Um, but what it did for me was open the door. If matter is connected beyond time and space, then that explains synchronicity to me. If we are in the quantum field, and I can sense, you know, other people around the world, that then that explains it to me. So, in terms of the nine keys, uh, Bernie, I promise you, I, I, I'll get through that. But those to me is where one should begin the practicality of how does synchronicity arise in the day-to-day and what it is that you do about it what you said really quickly uh, i i I really support is that there is some way and you'll call it quantum that people can sense what's going on with each other at a distance and what sensing what's going on what the earth can be sensed at a yeah. distance and yeah. that's the observation is most important just how you explain it the quantum thing is a way of explaining it for some people it makes it sa- it yeah. makes it understandable to them i just use psychosphere because i can conceptualize it in a simpler way but that we can feel and know about other people at a distance is the key uh, the key yes. observation you are making, Phil. And, and that, you know, that relates to you and your father, Bernie, the, the story of you and your father, when you sensed your father and your father was ill. That's the practicality that I want to bring to this whole field. Synchronicity lives because the stories continue and stories that cannot be explained other than we are connected at a distance. Yes. Uh, and, and to me, that, that that's important. I, I, yes. At one level, at one level, Bernie, I don't. I like not to get into all the subtleties of the site. You know, all the different ways of explaining it. To me, synchronicity happens because the stories continue. Very good. Okay. Yeah, that's that's, that's very good. So let's go on to the next set of but then, keys. But then once 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 you've noticed that these things happen, and you think, oh my god. What the hell is that all about? And then you wait for another thing to happen and another synchronicity happens. You then begin to say, oh, my God, there's more to this than I thought of. So, for example, and I'm, tr- and I'm trying to keep this to organization and, and leadership stuff. Um, when I organized Singapore's first happiness conference, why did I do that? Because leaders in Singapore were stressed. And I said, let's, let's have something to help us understand happiness. A friend of mine said, you need to bring Martin Seligman, Dr. Martin Seligman, to be the keynote speaker at this conference. He's the world leader in happiness. That was on a Monday. On a Tuesday, I was talking with an Australian friend. I said, I need to invite Martin Seligman to this conference, but how the hell do you get hold of Dr. Martin Seligman? He's a busy man and a friend, and you know, a famous man. And the guy reached into his computer, switched on his computer, wrote on a piece of paper and said, Dr. Martin Seligman was working with us last week, last month. Here are his personal emails and telephone number. That opened up me doing Singapore's first happiness conference uh, and spending a week with Martin Seligman, who then brought along all his friends for the conference, which was of, of great benefit. So key number four, when a synchronous happens and it's a second or a third one celebrate it because it's awesome and I, I hate the way the word awesome uh, maybe I'm getting too old Bernie but I, I hate the way the word awesome is linked to trivial things these days so I've specifically said for key number four which is about integrating synchronicity celebrate it have a good feeling about it give thanks to it whoever 
you know, one might actually have as your God or your spirit or whoever you thank for. Just fill yourself with, wow, what a wonderful thing just happened. Because the strange thing is I found that the more you do that, the more synchronicities are likely to happen. That's key number four. Key number five this is about integrating. What my PhD um, executives told me, the ones that I interviewed, said there's this strange thing that when you have a synchronicity which is linked to serving others, then somehow that seems to attract more synchronicity. So my key number five is be a servant citizen. So there is a notion of servant leadership, which I'm sure most people know. I've said it seems that when you are serving others, somehow synchronicity comes more easily. Key number six, and this is the third, the three integration ones, Bernie. Um, and a lot of people have done some research on this. Heart Math have done research on this. Dr. Joe Dispenser has done great research on this. Set intention with heart and brain. There's something about connecting with this energy, which we're all you know, immersed in, which is accelerated if your brain is strongly saying, I want to ensure that I do some work with what's going on in Ukraine at the moment. I want to contribute, I don't know how to do that, so my brain is saying, I want that. The heart also, and I've got this as an exercise in the book, the heart also needs to feel, what would it be like if you were working with somebody who's involved in Ukraine? How would that feel? And it would feel great and it would feel meaningful. So the brain and the heart, brain with intention, and the heart feeling strongly filling your sensibilities for that to happen. And why I mentioned Ukraine, I just mentioned it out of the blue. That's exactly what I said two or three months ago. And I think I told you this story. When I intended that I wanted somehow to do something in this crazy situation in Ukraine, the next or the next few days, I was contacted by somebody who was working with an aid agency in Ukraine. So suddenly, somehow, and I'm actually in my fifth session with them tomorrow, suddenly, somehow, my strong desire to do something somehow attracted to me a person who says, I need coaching. And the interesting thing, Bernie, this is the first person who said to me, I need coaching, and I see you do synchronicity. I want coaching in synchronicity. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Never happened. I've never had a coaching client who came to me saying, I want synchronicity coaching. She did, and she was in answer to me, to the very strong brain and heart coherence that I had, that I wanted somehow to do something in Ukraine. That's that, I, I really like that story, uh, and I'm glad to hear it again. Uh, the, the key, one of the keys in your keys here is getting the coherence between heart and brain. And it's, yeah. it's a major problem. There's also something that I add body too, because I put body in a more generic sense okay. that, that okay. The, there's the three of them are involved. Uh, the, the, to be able to get them all like lined up and to listen to each of them because each one's a character in your yeah. whole, whole psyche and our whole self. And so my my mind is like telling me what it wants me to do. Uh, my heart has kind of feelings about whether we should do it or not or has something else to do. My body might be too tired to do anything about it uh, or might have a different uh, need. And to be able to align them is a real important part of being uh, a well-functioning human being. How do you help people align heart and mind? Well, I, I in, in that chapter in the book, it's written, um, but it's a very simple thing to do. You actually say, what is it you want in your life? Uh, and I get them to describe a short sentence. I want a job that helps with 
bringing peace to the world in a meaningful way. And they say that statement and that phrase regularly each day. That's point number one. Point number two is imagine you have that job. What does it feel like? Describe the feelings. So I get them to, as well as having the intent with the words, to let the feelings flood their body. So maybe the body is also linked here, Bernie, in, in my version of this. What does that feel like to have that job? And I ask them to go around their life already strongly saying that they have what it is that they desire with their brain and feeling it with their heart. And that often produces results. But there's got to be that connection between brain and heart. Uh, and I call it, and, and Heart Math does this so well, I call it heart brain coherence. Yeah, that's, the word, it, that's, that's the word I use coherence. Yeah, and it includes the body as well, Bernie. Your whole system has got to feel like it's on fire for what it is that you desire. I've never said that phrase before on fire for what it is you desire. Um, and this is. So, so the first three keys were discovering synchronicity. You found it. You found it's incredible thing. The th keys four, five, and six are about integrating that into your life. So, to me, it's just a a sec uh, an automatic reaction these days. When I want something, I automatically do brain and heart coherence, and I go around my day feeling and thinking that until it appears or something appears that's similar to what it is that I want. That's so important to have in mind what you like. Uh, it, yes. it, there's something about thought having an influence on whatever we mean by reality. And you're marshalling the heart and the mind in a way that allows the po potential increase of that manifesting itself. Yeah, yeah. And, and then when, when um, I've got my eye on the clock here, and I want to keep to what I promise you to do. We do all nine keys. So discover the first three keys, integrate the next three keys, and then the th seven, eight, and nine are about mindsets. So you've found synchronicity, you're integrating it into your life, but there needs to be a mindset change. Key number seven is about live with hope and possibility. So many of us live in survival thinking that we can never have what it is that we want. But synchronicity, a life of synchronicity, tells us that the, the world has our back. Somehow there is an energy in the world. Now, it doesn't work all the time, and I'm not saying this is just magic that happens every time you want it. But there's something about having a hopeful mindset and a possibility mindset, thinking that the best is going to turn up for you, that actually helps synchronicity as a mindset. So many of us live in, oh, this could go wrong, could go wrong, this could go wrong, which is survival. Uh, and Dr. Joe Dispenza talks very strongly about survival. We have survival and that's necessary. When you're crossing a busy street, you better be in survival mode to make sure you don't get run over. But if we stay in that state, synchronicity ain't gonna come calling. That's key number seven. Key number eight, and this to me is crucial, is merge with the present moment. And that's so difficult for all of us because synchronicity is not going to come calling if you're worried about the past or worried about the future and not living now. So in that chapter of the book, I have an exercise where people just stop where they are and sense and feel whatever is going on around them. I will often, Bernie, when I have something that I want to happen in my life, I will set my intention and have the feeling in my heart, and then I'll go walking the streets of Singapore. And by the way, this picture behind me is the picture from my balcony. So I've got some great places to just to go walking and see what happens to me. Because if I go walking with this intention in my mind, I will find the answer to the questions I'm asking. One of the exercises I do with leaders and teams that I work with, I literally tell them to go on a one hour 
silent walking meditation with their eyes open, obviously. So they set their question beforehand about what it is they want in their life. And I send them out into the streets of where we happen to do the seminar. And I say, just notice whatever you notice. Then they come back and they tell me what they found. So they're walking, but they're living in the present moment and noticing stuff. Every time they do that, they come back with an answer to questions that they have. That's, that's so key cool. number eight. That's so cool. That's so cool. I mean, th th I tell you, some amazing things happen. Uh, let, let me tell you one thing. I sometimes it just happens to me so easily, and sometimes not. I'm not saying I'm a I'm a magician here, but sometimes stuff happens. Like I said to myself again, business wise, I run a leadership consulting uh, firm here in Singapore. Uh, I said, you know synchronicities are more likely to happen when you are in nature so i should run more of my seminars as much as i can in a natural environment that was monday wednesday i got an email from somebody i had never known before it was a bank in south africa i don't know how they got my name uh, they said uh, philip we'd like you to run a leadership seminar fly fishing and leadership and we'd like you to run it next to a lake outside Johannesburg uh, and we will use the image and the practicality of fly fishing to teach our leaders how to be more in the present moment. The next day I was told by a organization Australian company working in Sri Lanka Philip the leadership seminar team seminar you're going to run for us we're not going to run it in the office we're going to run it in a um, nature park in the south of Sri Lanka so it meant that in the seminar I had one day where we went into the safari and I told people before they went to have a question and to get their answers from nature which which again they did so key number eight is I think it's so crucial for so many things that we do but I think that merging and living in the present moment is crucial for opening your heart and your mind to what nature brings to you. And then key number nine, and then we will, you ask me more questions. Key number nine, connect with source. A lot of the people I interviewed, Bernie in my PhD, talked about God, talked about stillness, talked about Allah as being the source of giving them answers to whatever they wanted, answers to prayer. Obviously, not everybody has a religious belief, so that's fine. But most people I've found have a belief in something beyond themselves. Uh, and source, uh, I don't know if you read Joe Jaworski's Synchronicity, but great book by Joe Jaworski, but I like even more his, sec his next book, which is just called Source, where he actually looks about what is the source of synchronicity. So I just, if people have a, a faith, then it's easier. If they don't, I just know that the jury is still out on whether there is in fact a source that takes care of you. So I finished with that as key number nine. Um, and these are the mindsets. So live, key number seven, live a mindset of hope and possibility, not survival. Key number eight, merge with the present moment. And key number nine, reflect on and connect with source, whatever it is that you think that means. And the story, just final story, Bernie, then you can grill me because we've got about five, six minutes left. The, the, the story I love for that is happened to me with my own father. Now, I appear on Singapore TV early morning breakfast show to answer views on the news, they called it. So they give you at six o'clock in the morning, Here's the story for today, seven o'clock, you're live on TV giving your responses to these international events. One morning, uh, at five in the morning, because you had to get up early to get to the studio by six, I'm getting ready at home to actually go to the studio. I looked at my email, my email uh, on, my, on my phone and it said, message from your dad. Now, my dad had died one year before. 
And the email was from a psychic friend of mine in the States, professional psychic. And she said, Dad, uh, Phil, your dad has been bothering me for a while to get this message to you. There was a message from my dad. A variety of things. But one of the things that she relayed my dad, the email to me, was, I'm proud of the work you're doing on the television box. Now, this is 5 o'clock in the morning. I'm getting ready to go to appear on the television. But the fact that he called it television box, who in today's age calls it the television box, which is what my dad's generation called it. So I was stunned by this notion that somehow my dad, who died a year before, suddenly somehow knew what I was doing. He knew I was about to appear on TV. He said, I'm proud of the work you're doing on the television box. You'll be doing more of this. That said, and still amazes me, Bernie, that there I was, and my dad, from wherever the hell he was, knew what I was doing and knew he could get a message to me. Now that's, again, you can have all the philosophic discussions you like about source, but that story, how the heck did that happen? So that's, that, that's, that's my story around source. That's part of the fun is trying to figure out how, that, how some of that happens. We don't know. But, you know. but you know, when I tell those stories, Bernie, in a conference, I get so many people coming to me afterwards and saying, I'm glad you told that story. Let me tell you what happened to me. That's why we're doing anyway. coincidence. That's why we do coincidence ambassadors, Phil, is because we try to get people to tell other people their stories and then they often hear coincidence stories back. It's yeah. it's, it's, and, it's, a, and, it's a seeding. And and absolutely correct. And I just love the work that you've started and are doing on this with the coincidence ambassadors. What I want to do though, Bernie with this model and again who knows whether it's true or not it came from my phd research but it seems to be resonating with a lot of people i wanted to have a model that says let's not just be about telling stories let's be about having a structure and some keys which will help you accelerate how synchronicity happens in absolutely your life. that's the the idea is to do the stories so people will say, hey, there's some stories here and there's a lot of them. How does that work and how can we make more of them happen? And that's what you're talking about doing. As we get near the end of this, Phil, my, my biggest concern these days and for the book, the end of the book that I'm coming, that's coming out in September is my concern that are, every, so many other people have of the sixth major extinction that human beings are doing to ourselves as well as to the other living creatures on this planet. And I'm a great believer that uh, coincidence awareness, synchronicity, serendipity awareness can be a big help in trying to unify uh, the global consciousness in a way that sure. puts human, collective human organism mind, the collective human organism heart in a coherent pattern to be able yeah. to somehow as a collective organism of human beings do something different from just kind of letting it happen by not doing anything differently how do you how do you approach that question oh for sure i mean there's many things to be depressed about in the moment bernie and and, and i think that taking care of the environment which is why i've been so depressed by ukraine because it seems to be taking us back and I wake up every morning and the first thing I see is the stories. I don't know the answer to that, Bernie. All I know is that synchronicity stories continue to happen, which point to an energy and a force stronger and wiser than us. So I don't, and I, I really avoid easy answers to this. But all I know is that I believe that the world somehow, some way is, is taking care of itself. The earth is taking care of itself. And our role, I think, is to watch where that is happening and get alongside it. Because I think that the more we have in our own energy, the more we um, spread the energy that we are here to serve and to help each other, the more we'll actually take care of the environmental stuff. 
I don't, I don't think that's a specific enough answer it's, for you. It's, but I, it's the beginning of what I was looking for is that it's, we can't sit around passively. We've no. got, we've got some, a certain amount of responsibility to try to reverse what we as human beings are doing. And I'm suggesting that synchronicity awareness using nine keys has a 10th key to be able to consider in which that we become a recognized organism ourselves, that human beings are not just isolated from each other and who, oh, yeah. come, oh, yeah. who come together every once in a while. We are a collective human organism. Each of us has a role to play in trying to make something happen for the survival of ourselves and our planet. And that synchronicity with the help of your nine keys can become a way to identify who I am relative to other people who are also experiencing synchronicity in their own way so that we can join well, together to do something about what's going on. Well, you, you've read my book, uh, Bernard, because I have the privilege of you having done a review of my book. If you remember, the last chapter was called The Promise of Synchronicity. Uh, and I finish with synchronicity pioneers. And you are one of the pioneers in, in that chapter because it's not about with our will coming together. It's about recognizing that we are already together. We don't have to do anything. The actual force, the energy, we are already connected with each other. And what, we, what you just said, I agree with. We have to recognize, recognize, cognize yeah. again, recognize that we are connected. We, and synchronicity helps us see that rec recognizing that we are in this together. It's not to make it happen. It's to recognize that we are together where we tend to think of ourselves as, as separate. And, and that's why the big thing, Bernie, is the shift away from Newtonian thinking, which covers everything, politics, economics, education, that says we are separate. We are now in an age, we knew 100 years ago, Newtonian thinking was dead. It's taking us a long time to realize that we are connected, yes. energetically connected, that when I have a thought, but my sister in Yorkshire, England, she's actually going through something that I'm feeling, even though she's 5,000 miles away. Yeah. So it, it, we, we, we're waking up to realize that. And yeah. that's why I think the, the world is giving us clues. And what if the whole of the environmental issues in the world are about forcing the world to open its eyes and understand are connected. Yeah. Um, the, the, the last part of my book is about understanding that we were connected with the environment. We lost that connection through with the new, Newtonian thinking. And we are in an age, you and I, where we are realizing we're coming back to that connection with nature. Yes. Yes. Well, Phil, uh, we got to Was the that, end. Well, that, 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 we yeah, got I think to we the got end. To the end. You and I could talk a lot more about this, Bernie, yes. and I love, I, I love what you're doing, and, and, and thank you for your pioneering spirit to enable all of this stuff to happen. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate you. Well, thank you very much, Phil, and I deeply appreciate being able to not only go through the nine keys, but to get to the last part of this to recognize that you and I are connected. And my way of talking about you and I being connected was the mysterious hiding in plain sight idea that we both stumbled I, across. I, we both I stumbled. never knew that, Bernie. We both you and did. I had, well, isn't it interesting to think that you had that in your book? I didn't know that. That means somewhere you and I are connected. How the hell am I working with you? It's because somehow the energies happened that we sensed each other and we worked together. Uh, and and uh, we've tremendous. sensed it yet more deeply today, Phil, and uh, experienced it more deeply. And thank you very much for your heartfelt discussion with me. I de deeply You're appreciate You're so welcome, buddy. You're Deep so welcome. This cycle sphere.
is our mental atmosphere like a hologram of cosmic consciousness.